on today's World Insight. With fears of the coronavirus gripping Japan, can Japan thwart an epidemic? And later, thousand-year-old remedies or cutting-edge plasma therapy, and everything in between. What is the most cost-effective treatment for COVID-19? And here's our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. With a gradual increase in confirmed cases across Japan, outside the hundreds who were infected on a cruise ship docked near Tokyo, the country is shifting its focus to preempt a spike in infections and resulting deaths. On Tuesday, the Japanese government rolled out a basic policy to stem the spread of new coronavirus, streamlining hospitals to better treat critical cases. Though the government maintains the country is safe from a large-scale epidemic, many Japanese worry that the virus may overstretch its medical system. Earlier, I talked to Yoshikazu Kato. He is now based in Hong Kong, originally from Japan. Let's hear what he has to say. Yoshikazu Kato, welcome to World Insight. Thank you. Tell me about your response about the latest outbreak already taking place in Japan. Uh, I think uh, in Japan, including the government, the society, and the citizens, we have concluded now the coronavirus is outbreaking, already outbreak, but not yet spreading out. So Japan has not seen the very large scale of epidemic. The Japanese government, especially Prime Minister Abe, has been calling on businesses to do telecommuting and also to making workers going to work in shifts rather than together. How much do you think these advice will be followed by businesses? And will businesses be able to shoulder the financial risks and also pressure as a result of this? Uh, yes, uh, looking back to the, the, the fourth quarter of last year, I mean, the, in terms of economic growth, that was negative. So now the Japanese business, business community, including our central bank, are worrying about, you know, the first quarter of this uh, year uh, would be negative again. So uh, our uh, governor of the central bank, uh, Mr. Kuroda, already responded to that uh, our biggest uncertainty in the economy would be the coronavirus. Coronavirus would be the biggest uncertainty for the Japanese economy this year. So uh, this perspective has been shared in Japanese community. So you know now you know you know Jap Japanese people and societies uh, lack of flexibility. But now our government encourages the companies and people to be more you know self-restrained. You know for example like uh, setting up different working hours or you know, you know re 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 relocate some production base or something like that. So now we are trying to avoid the risk from the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, Mr. Kato, as you know very well, there are certain technical issues. For example, the uh, incubation period of uh, coronavirus this time is extremely long, and there are information deficits still about what this virus is and how it is spreads, uh, even on board the Diamond Princess. On the other hand, of course, there's a public policy and health policy perspective to this as well. Now, you see at this critical moment, how do you see as a citizen, uh, Japan should face up to this challenge? Do you think at this moment there's enough resources and mechanism to do so from a citizen's perspective? Uh, from the perspective of citizen, uh, as, uh, as an expert said, uh, the next uh, week or two would be the critical moment. That's right. Uh, to you know, tackling this coronavirus, right? Yes. But you know, now we haven't seen you Extremely know that kind critical. of panic. Mm. So you know, yeah, very much critical. So you know, we need to avoid. We need to be self-constrained. For example, you know, wash hands. You know, or you know, avoid the gathering with other people. You know, so this this is a very important thing uh, for normal citizens. So I yeah. think this is some kind of consensus in Japan. And now you know, today, you know, on Tuesday, Japanese government launched a new basic policy, uh, you know, to you know to to improve the, our medical system or more you know coordination with local government or you know medical institutions. Yeah. So these are the positive signal, and our policy is now getting more preemptive. 
mm. rather than you know responding possibly. So and this is a kind of positive signal for Japanese citizens. Yeah, and Mr. Kato, as you may know, one of the crucial issues is what about those people that who got off from Diamond Princess, even though some of them, most of them, were tested negative. That's how they could get off. Uh, but still, the incubation mm. period of the disease once again told us there could be a fake negative, as we know. So some of them already now develop the symptoms and been confirmed uh, with the novel coronavirus now. So what's going to happen mm. to these people who went off board the ship and who are already interacting with the information they knew at that time negative with the local community. Uh, how do you think the local community is going to be able to face up to this big uncertainties? Uh, yes, as you mentioned and pointed out, you know, those who, who, who are investigated uh, as negative you know, when they got off. But now some guys already changed to positive. So this means you know, th the government approach and response is somehow problematic. So now, you know, this this would create some panic in public opinion because you know, you know, some problematic people, infected people, are around us. So in this situation, you know, Japanese government, first of all, we need to uh, talk more with the hospital. So we need to improve the the usage of hospital because our hospital resources are limited, mm. right? So now, Japanese government said now some hospital who is who has not uh, rated with the in, in infections, mm. you know, equipment. These, po these ca uh, capacity uh, should receive some uh, infected people uh, to increase the resources to you know, absorb more you know, infected people or some, you know, some people who have some symptom, uh, you know, however severe or yeah. s relatively you know, weak or something like that. So now Japanese government now we are trying to talk and negotiate more with the local government and hospital and, and medical institutions to reduce these risks or you know, some kind of concerns in Japanese society. Mr. Kato, besides those on board and now off board the Diamond Princess, there are other clusters mm. of cases going on in Japan. If I could give you some examples, the northern prefecture of Hokkaido and the western prefecture mm. of Ishikawa. Explain to us where these places are and what do you make of their capabilities of the localities to deal with issues like this? How will the central local government relationship work in a way? Uh, first of all, Japan has 47 prefectures. You mm. know, Hokkaido is in the north, and Ishikawa Prefecture is uh, very close to East China Sea, you know, uh, in a coast area. And it's a bit relatively, you know, the edge of the territory, not the central place like, unlike Tokyo or Yokohama. Uh, so, you know, this is not that kind of very, s the place of the center. But, you know, uh, as I said, uh, we have 47 prefectures. And now, not only Hokkaido and Ishikawa you pointed out, including my hometown, you know, like, you know, Kanagawa, Shizuoka, you know, a lot of places are happening, you know, disinfected people. So this is not only, you know, some limited cases. It's a more like a you know, national-wide issue. So that's why our government trying, is trying to say, you know, we need to, you know, strengthen our coordination with local governments, you know, not only around central or capital areas, but like Hokkaido, Ishikawa. And now we are still checking uh, the infection routes, you know, mm -hmm. where are these coronavirus coming from and, and to go where. So uh, we, we have not confirmed yet completely uh, in terms of professionalism. So this is, you know, one reason why we say, you know, the situation is still very much critical yeah. in the next, next uh, or two, two weeks. Yeah. Yes. Uh, now, your society in Japan is experiencing something that China also experienced in the early stages of this outbreak, in a way. Uh, people are asking mm. where to get the masks. People are asking, how can I protect myself and my families? And people are asking, uh, do I still need to really home quarantine? Or I can go to public places because I need to go shopping. And people are asking, how can I get my daily necessities? All of these information are crucial for the stability of a society in order to deal with the crisis. Mr. Kato, what do you make of the confidence you could have now about the society's capability to do all of this? Uh, first of all, because I was born and grew up in Japan, and actually uh, we've been educated from uh, our childhood. You know, after coming home, you need to wash your hands. You know, if you have you know something like a symptom of cold, then you need to wear a mask 
right? You need to, you know, avoid that contact with other people if you, you, get, you catch a cold. So, you know, our, our most of the Japanese citizens, we know what's going on, how to respond. But now the situation is abnormal. You know, unlike some, you know, you know very normal influenza or, you know, normal cold, cold it, it's, it's different. So, you know, that's why now some, somehow overreacted. Right? So you know, our government, you know, encouraged the people say we don't overreact, just very much stick to what we should do, like wash your hands, avoiding mm -hmm. the gathering or, you know, differentiate the working hours, you know, or telework, you know, this, this, all of these are what we can do yeah. to, to contain the coronavirus. So, so I think, you know, in terms of, you know, making some confidence, I think, you know, first of all, we need to trust the government. So the government should be trusted. That's why you need to improve your transparency. You need to, you know, create your credibility, including how to deal with the diamond princess, and, and how to, you know, open your information. Uh, all, all of the process should be, you know, kind of, you know, confidence building process. And this is a more like interactive process between the government and citizen. So this is more like, you know, very much, you know, nationwide, and you know, and the private and public sectors combined process. This is going to be very important, particularly, you know, in the summer we are going to ho host the Olympics in Tokyo, so it's a very much critical time for Japan. Mm. Uh, are you going to go back home? I know you're traveling now outside Japan. Are you concerned about your uh, families and parents and the friends? Mm. Uh, yeah, you know, for example, some scholars or government officials, you know, who, you know, negotiate with China, the United States, you know, some, you know, travel are restricted. But, you know, my family or my friends, you know, you know, they are living around Tokyo, you know, you know, very much cautious, you know. Uh, you know for example, my mom, you know, uh, she's wearing masks all the time, uh, you know, outside of the ho home. And, you know, you know, and avoid the gathering or the places, a lot of people, you know, as, as much as, as we can. Mm. So, so, but I do not think, you know, the society or citizens are under the panic. So, because, because we have the basic knowledge, well, when something emerges, happens, mm. the infectious emergence happens, you know, how do we respond and how, uh, what should not to do? So yeah. we have the basic and educated, you know, knowledge. That's why, you know, I do not think, you know, we are going to have panic or yeah. something like that. Final question for you, Mr. Mm. Kato. Many Chinese remember mm. dearly the help and the support coming from Japan, particularly the Japanese people, during the early outbreak of uh, the novel coronavirus to the Chinese people by donating masks and medical supplies. The Japanese business community also acted uh, on time. Uh, Mr. Kato, uh, this is going to be a global fight, even though it's not yet a pandemic. Uh, at this moment, from your perspective, how do you see that? And this neighborly relations, in a way, of how you know, encouraging we could be for one another in order to go through this very difficult process to see the end of the tunnel and the light mm. at the end of the tunnel. Uh, now the society is globalized, and this is the issue of humanity, you know, the issue of human beings. So, you know, no border, you know, fundamentally. So, you know, and, and, and of course, in terms of interests between Japan and China, common interests, now there are more than uh, uh, 30,000 Japanese companies in China. Uh, and a lot of you know very you know famous automobile company they have their factories in China. That's why we really hope uh, China could resolve this issue as quick as they can. And and in and in terms of friendship and you know humanity, you know you know if something you know pro problems or something difficulties in China, of course you know we are willing to you know you know donate or you know, help in terms of humanities. And, the, and this is uh, this is another kind of confidence building process. So this is very quite good for you know Japan China diplomatic relations. And now you know the Chinese president is is scheduled to visit Japan uh, in maybe the next couple of months. And this is going to be a very important yeah. event for Japan and China. So I think you know it's uh, you know as as is mentioned, it's a process of confidence building. So we need to share our mostly mostly common interests. You yeah. know, we need to fight together with this epidemic. This is a very important process for confidence building. Yoshikazu Kato, thank you so much. And our heart and minds goes to many of your family members and friends in Japan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're watching World Insights, still to come on our program.